Cause 2 is a very simple and straightforward game. The majority of its content is action-packed and adventurous, but it's not the best game in the world, so I have to ask myself why I keep running back to it. I had no interest in this series until a Steam Summer Sale in 2017 when I shrugged my shoulders and bought it just to give it a try. Boy was I in for a ride. I'll have you know I'm not a huge fan of shooter games. I typically would much rather enjoy a fantasy world I'm entirely unfamiliar with, somewhere medieval or futuristic, usually preferring the former. This is why I was so shocked with how much I enjoyed my Just Cause 2 experience. I love this game, despite its many flaws which I'll talk about later, and I'll clarify that I don't love it all because of its gameplay, but because of how funny the game is to me. I've never been able to put a finger on whether or not Just Cause 2 has actually been a game that tries to take itself seriously or not, but the end result of its design certainly comes out to be a big laugh for me. Before I get ahead of myself though, let me break it down. I very much enjoy Just Cause 2 because its mechanics are introduced to you in interesting ways. Just Cause 2 will often have the loading tips telling you something about the mechanics of the game, sure, but how much it tells you through the loading screen is very limited compared to what you can learn by doing. Take Riku's grappling hook, for example. The grappling hook is the central mechanic of the game. It's used for navigation, combat, and destroying the enormous sandbox environment around you that is Panau. It can be used to engage in melee combat, tie enemies to floors, walls, or ceilings, or pull the agent to a car or platform. Now take a look at this loading tip from Just Cause 2. All it does is advise the player to try out the grappling hook in combat, instead of telling them all of the little things it can do up front. I love when a game does this because it makes it all the more exciting to see the game's feedback in the top left corner let you know that you've just killed an enemy like a pinata, or dragged them by a fast car. Before you know it, you're keeping track of all the statistics and bringing up the numbers for fun. Those statistics are what make me want to keep aiming for headshots instead of being stale and killing enemies with a barrage of bullets every time. You always have to do it your way, huh? Well, get on with the mission then. I very much enjoy Just Cause 2 because it doesn't force you along a certain path. Just Cause 2 starts out with the essential tutorial session, sure, but at least it doesn't feel too long and it's not aggravating. It helps you to become familiar with the basics of the game, and not long after this, you're standing in the middle of Panau, with the entire experience in front of you. The amount of options you have aren't limited by how far along you are in Rico's main mission, and the game will even encourage you to explore what it has to offer and wreak havoc upon the property of the totalitarian government. The game also offers faction missions, which are either wipeouts of a large government fortress, or short and sweet narratives that don't feel like interminable errands. With more completed faction missions comes more property owned by the faction in question, and you have the opportunity of taking a look at the map to see how much of the world has essentially become yours. Just Cause 2 isn't trying to pull you in a certain direction. Instead, it's encouraging you to embrace your own playstyle and introduce the world to yourself. And that's a note that many other AAA games right now would benefit from taking. Last night, the soldiers took the neighbors! I very much enjoy Just Cause 2 because it is full of laughs. Just Cause 2 contains many lines of dialogue that exaggerate accents and mesh together in amusing ways when being uttered by multiple characters at once. When wiping out a military base, you'll hear many war cries being thrown out all at once in the midst of overlapping gunfire sound effects. And it's fun to hear the amount of ludicrous screaming dwindle as you obliterate enemy forces. It's almost like an indication of your progress. Just Cause 2 also makes a joke of heavily militarized government dictatorships like North Korea or Venezuela. Propaganda is everywhere glorifying Panau's president Pandak Panay and literally putting him on a pedestal. It's amusing to hear the propaganda trailers spread out through the country insist that nothing bad is happening and that its leader is amazing. However amusing though, it mocks real dictatorships that behave like this pretty well 
which is a sad reality. I doubt I need to sell the point that North Korea's cult of personality has suppressed the quality of life for its people for decades. North Korean families are expected and required to hang pictures in their households of Kim Jong-un and Kim Jong-il, as well as present offerings to statues and monuments representing them. Government officials are also assigned the task of entering homes to ensure no picture of a current or former supreme leader is hung lower than a person stands, and are kept clean and never dusty, lest there be a fine, or worse. I don't believe I need to continue on that point. Just Cause 2 makes a joke of a horrible dictatorship and diminishes its power in the same way much other media does, and that makes for an interesting setting for the player to explore. All in all, Just Cause 2 is an amusing ride, but it isn't without flaw. It isn't riddled with bugs or glitches or unpolished design, but the ones it does have really stand out. Sometimes the game tells me I've destroyed statues or monuments when I haven't, physics on rigged bodies are generally bad, enemies and Rico fly comically into the sky if they're killed while getting out of a vehicle, and voice acting and cutscenes in the game are annoying and poorly done if not completely unnecessary. And worst of all, in my opinion, is the AI assigned to citizens of Banal. If you start a riot and begin to build heat or fire at an NPC vehicle, its respective driver will stop the car and take off on foot through the crossfire, leading themselves to their death in the process. Doesn't it make more sense to stay in the car and floor the gas pedal to safety? No. No, of course not. Don't be silly. I could say a lot more about Just Cause 2. The driving is fun, the plot of the main mission is at the very least passable, which can be rare for a game like this, and it's the only game I've ever played wherein the statistics of my playthrough have mattered to me. But I'd much rather be beating the tar out of a militant Panawan officer hanging from a lamppost and screaming about my wired thing than giving you more than enough reasons to try it out for yourself if you haven't already. I hope that the new upcoming title, Just Cause 4, is a closer replica to the second installment than the third, which I didn't care to play for more than an hour. As this video comes to a close, let me play you out with some horrid, horrid voice acting. Thanks for watching. Damn it! That's incendiary stuff on those cards. They fall into the wrong hands. It's gonna be one hell of a firestorm back in the our goal is for the people of Panau to break the chains of oppression and rise up as one. I hear you are looking for able-bodied comrades. You are the Scorpio, no? I hear you are very skilled. The thin air up there is advantageous in their research on jet propulsion and rocket fuel. And you better hop on. They'll swap that bird out of the sky on sight. They just took her and put it in the jail. Jail. Right away. No trial, no, no nothing.